Hey everyone, and welcome back to this installment, this episode of our Granite mini series on ACT calculator hacks. Today, we are talking about systems of equations. Systems of equations are those sort of situations where we have two equations and the problems telling us to find the intercept between them or find the solution set or something like that. We're going to go through and look at some real ACT problems, some real official ACT problems, some easy, some medium, and some hard. And I'm going to show you how we can use our TI-83, 84, 89 calculators to solve all of these questions, making them super easy and taking a little bit of effort out of the amount of math that we have to do on this ACT math section. So let's jump into it. So starting out here, what is the XY solution if one exists? to the systems of equations y equals 2x plus 6 and x, sorry, 6x plus 12 equals 3y. So this is question 21 on the ACT, specifically it's form D03. You can find all of these officially released ACTs in the link below. Um, so check those out if you want to follow along. But let's actually just go ahead and start solving this. So I'm going to show you how to do it with your calculator, but I'm also going to show you some ways that you want to think about these type of equations, these type of questions on the ACT. So what we want to do here, I'm just going to pull up my TI-84 calculator here. Now you can see I've got it right here in real life. But I have this computer version as well, so you can just follow along with that. And the main thing that we want to do when we start wanting to solve these systems of equations is going to y equals. So you can see here, you can follow along with my key press history down here at the bottom, right? I hit y equals. We want to clear this out. We don't need that. And we can clear this out here. And we can clear this out. And so what we want to do here is we have two equations, right? And we always want to get these two equations into our y equals area here. So the first one's easy enough, right? We just say 2x, oh, okay, 2x, and it's plus 6, right? So 2x plus 6. Now we need to get the other one in. And notice here, our calculator wants everything in terms of y, right? We want everything in terms of y. So we need to do a tiny little modification to this equation so it's in terms of y. We can see everything's in terms of 3y right now, but we want the y by itself. So if we just imagine taking both sides and dividing them by 3, then that y, that 3y becomes a y, and we have y equals 6x plus 12, all of that over 3. So let's go give that a try. And if you're struggling with with this, if you're struggling with the fractions behind this, make sure to check out some of our other math videos. I have ones on fractions, simplifying algebraic equations, all of that sort of stuff. So do check that out. But for now, I'm just going to assume that you're comfortable with the algebra behind that so that we can keep moving. So that becomes 6x, right, plus 12. And remember, if it's a fraction here, we want to go ahead and put the whole, the whole top part here into parentheses. And that was not what I wanted to do here. Let's put this whole thing into parentheses. And let's make that six. And let's delete this thing. Okay, should have done that the first time that would have been easier, but bear with me here. So we're going to put that in. And like I said, we're dividing the whole thing by three, because we want to have that y by itself. So now we have here just two ways that we wrote these equations, right? y equals 2x plus 6 and y equals uh, 6x plus 12 divided by 3. And we want to know if a solution exists, right? If the solution exists. So what we would do here is we're going to just go to calc. So you're going to see me hit this button in a second. That's second trace is calc. And we want to see the intersection. Intersection is kind of the calculator's word for solution to the systems of equations. It's sort of like a solve these two equations button. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and find the intersection. And we've got our two lines, right? These are our two equations. And the intersection of those is the place where they 
run into each other. It's the place where they where they intersect each other. So we're going to say, okay, is this my first line? Yes, it is. And it says curve. Don't worry. Sometimes they're curves. Sometimes they're lines. When it says curve, it just means, is this the thing that you want me to trace? And I say, yes, it is. And is this the second one that I want to trace? Yeah, that looks about fine. And then it wants me to guess. Now, if we notice, I don't actually see any area here that looks like an intersection. And the guessing doesn't really matter. We're going to actually worry about that guessing in a bit. We're going to worry about it a little bit later. But for now, if I don't see any, that's okay. I can just say, well, I don't see any intersections. So I'll just put it wherever. And I'm going to hit enter. And now we get this weird little thing here where it says error, no sign change. And this is the error that you'll actually always get if the systems of equations doesn't have a solution. So for all of you who are looking at this question and saying, I think the answer is E, you are absolutely correct. If these systems of equations did have a solution, let's say it was A, negative three comma zero, it would have given us that as the solution. So on to our next question. Our, our first one there was maybe what would the ACT would consider a slightly easier question. Now we're moving to what I might call a medium question. So here what we've got, let me just pull it up for us here. So the equation 24x squared plus 2x equals 15 has two solutions. What is the greater of the two solutions. So this is question 41 from form Z04. So the first thing that we want to do to solve one of these, right, is pull up that y equals on our calculator again. And we want to put in these two equations. Now, you might be saying two equations, what are you talking about? I only see one equation. But what I'm going to do is actually split the two sides of this up. So we're going to have y equals one side and y equals the other side. And then when we solve for that, those y's cancel out. And we are essentially solving our systems of equations. So let's give that a try here. We're going to say 24x squared, and that's going to be plus 2x. Very cool. And it's going to be 15 down here. And again, these are both going to equal y, and we're saying, give me a situation in which y1 equals y2. That's what this solve is doing. Find those situations where they equal each other. So this is essentially giving us precisely the solution that we want here. So let's go ahead here, and we're going to do second calc. And we are going to go down to intersect like last time. And here are our curves, right? And so we're going to just go ahead and say, okay, this blue one, right? This is our first curve. Good. The red one is our second curve. And we want the larger of the two solutions. So we can see here, we have a negative solution over here, right? The solution is always where these two functions touch each other. But that's negative. That's the lesser. We don't want that one. We want the bigger one. So let's go ahead over here and see if we can get kind of close to it. Again, you don't have to be right on it. You don't have to spend a ton of time. I'm going to actually show you. I'm going to just be kind of in the ballpark. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And we're going to have the intersection is x equals 0 0.75 and y equals 15. And remember, we are trying to solve for the x value here, right? The x value. So if we look down and see what is the x value to this, we see 0 0.75 which in fraction form is going to be equal to 3 fourths. So for all of you who said A, you are exactly right. A is the answer. And if you're you know, uncomfortable with fractions, remember you can always do that thing where you go math, frac, and oops, we actually want to quit this. It's not going to actually let me do it right in there. But if I had 0.75 and if I forgot what that was as a fraction, I do math, frac, and boom, three fourths, we get it. So just if you struggle with fractions, you know how to solve that. You can also watch my tricky little video on fractions also here on YouTube, see if that's maybe helpful to you. So with that, it is time to go to our last real ACT question here. This is the hardest one. So let's pull this up and see what we can do with it. Okay, so this is question 58, form D03, right? So if this is any of those questions that are in that kind of 50 to 60 range are really hard. So if this is tricky for you, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do it. 
Hopefully it'll make it a little easier. Just keep practicing. So we want to know for what values of b does the equation x squared plus bx plus 1 equal 0? For what for which of these does this have no real solutions, right? So we're going to begin in the same way that we've been working on all of these. We're going to go over to the y equals of our calculators, and we're going to clear out these old ones. We don't need these anymore. We'll get rid of this, get rid of that. And we're going to set this up in a similar way to what we did last time. So I'm going to go ahead and say x squared plus, and I'm just going to say x for now, plus 1. So that's one side of our equation, right? And then I'm going to say for the other side of my equation here, it's just going to be 0. And I want to know in what case, in what for what values of b does this have no real solutions at all. And there are tons of ways to solve this. We can solve this by using the quadratic formula, but today we're going to solve this with our calculator. So let me show you what we want to do. We want to try out some values here for b. So b, remember, is the number that is being multiplied by x. So I'm going to just do second insert, and I'm going to insert something here. I'm going to say 10 first. So let's see what happens if we calculate 10 as our value of b. And I'm going to show you in a second why we're going to do this, but for now, bear with me. So I'm going to do second, calc, and we're going to go down to intersection. Okay, so we have first curve, second curve, guess, and we see 10 has an intersection, right? So if that's the case, if 10, if we put in 10 for b, then we know that basically that is a solution. That value of b is giving us a solution. So let's just try another value here. We're going to just try a few things out. Like I said, this is a trickier question, so we want to try a few things out. Let's instead make this into a negative 10, right? Let's go insert, make it negative 10. And let's do the same thing. Second, calc, and we're going to go down to intersection. First, second, third, we can see there's an intersection. Ultimately, you don't even really need to use the second calc. If you can see that there are the two lines are touching each other, you know that there is a solution. Now, this negative 10 is a really useful number because if we look at our first few answers here, right? Our first answer, all values of b where b is less than 0. All values of b where b is less than 1. All values of b where b is less than 2. If we chose negative 10, that is a value that is less than 0, it's a value that's less than 1, and it's a value that's less than 2. And all of those are only going to work if it's any b that's less than, you know, all b's that are less than 0, all b's that are less than 1, and all b's that are less than 2. So we can actually, because negative 10 gave us a solution here, we can eliminate f, g, and h just with that one test. Super easy. We're left with just j and k, right? Where j is going to be values between 0 and 4, and k is going to be values between negative 2 and 2. So let's try a value here for j real quick, like 3, right? 3 would be in that range there. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. We'll go to our y equals again, and we're going to change this negative 10 here. We're going to just change it to 3 really fast. So make this 3. We're going to delete this, delete that, and let's just go ahead. I'm going to second calc and down here to intersect, and we're going to see. Boom, first curve, second curve, guess there is an intersection. So I could eliminate j, and right off the bat, I could choose k. But I'm going to show you what it actually looks like when you choose a value within k. So this range of values in k is somewhere between negative 2 and 2. So a value there between negative 2 and 2 um, could be, for example, it needs to be any value in between those two. So let's just choose 
negative one for fun, right? Why not? That's a good value. You could choose any value, but I'm going to choose negative one. Do that. And we don't want negative 13. We want negative one. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually do the same thing. Second calc intersect. And I'm going to say first curve, second curve. And I'm going to try and guess, right? I would say, well, it looks like it's kind of here. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to say error, no sign change. That, remember, from our first question is the error that we get when there is no solution, no solution to this equation at all. So we tried a value in that negative 2 to 2 range, and it gave us no solution. So that is all the more evidence that k is our solution. Again, this is 58. It's a little more complicated. Try and practice this with other numbers and see if you can still get the idea. So if you like this video, make sure to check out our next video in this series. It's right here. It's linked. It's all about imaginary numbers and how you can use your calculator to hack those questions on the ACT. See you then.